Dell and Mel, early in the morning. Welcome. We missed you last night, Dell. Yep, Dwight. So, cards and coffee. Uh, one of those times where just just to chat and um, also an excuse for me to be able to open some mail that people have sent in. So it won't be a, it won't be a super long stream. Well, get your fourth out, buddy. And Dellen, what are you sleeping your life away? Seven thirty. Us adults have been awake for hours. So, Dallin, you missed you missed last night. I need to uh, go in and change the title from uh, the Packs with Friends to Pulling a One of One. Pretty amazing. Exactly. I fed the cows, tended, tended to the animals. And hopefully we're back. And hopefully that's the only time that happens. Uh, Dwight, my favorite A's player would be... Uh, this guy right there, old Matt Chapman. Uh, now that's, that's if we're talking about current, uh, favorite, player. um, favorite player of all time would probably be Mark McGuire, just cause he played when I was growing up. Um, Raleigh fingers, because uh, I don't know, like growing up, I think you kind of like the people who played positions you played when you, uh, you know, if you play baseball and, uh, I always pitched and played third base. So I got something, something about third baseman and, um, pitchers. So, and I really like the, the kind of old school, uh, hey, Oliver, I really like the, uh, kind of that old school mentality pitchers. Um, not a ton of the young guys I feel like have it, but you know, the Verlanders. Um, I'm I'm really growing on uh, Max Scherzer. Something about the d dude's attitude, just kind of like a tough as nails dude. Uh, I like Roger Clemens growing up because he, you know, he just I I, I don't know. I, I like something about a guy that would you know throw heat and then you know nail you if uh, you got out of line. I know that's not exactly the way baseball is played now, but there's something about it that I like. And yeah, dudes like Boggs, you know, I feel like a lot of third basemen are like grinders, you know, like catchers, I think would fall in that same kind of category. Um, so anywho, um, Chapman, McGuire, Fingers. Um, and so that was, okay, so when I was thinking about doing cards and coffee, I feel like there's a bunch of these kind of like one-off topics that you could talk about. And so 
there was two things that I wanted to talk about today and get your guys' input and Boggs could fall into this category. And that is people you were a fan of on a team notable for that team. And then they switched teams. Um, well, I appreciate that, Dwight. So how do you guys feel about collecting cards from a player once they've switched teams? Do they do they lose interest to you? Uh, you still collect them all the same? Hey, Big Country's Wheelhouse, how's it going? So Big Country, we're talking about collecting cards of favorite players after they've switched teams, or it could be before. So I feel like Bryce Harper is one that's been kind of notable. Uh, and I've seen it with people that do collecting um, where they, they are Nats fans. They like Bryce Harper in Nats uniform, um, but they don't want anything to do with him in Phillies. Uh, I'm the same way with McGuire. Uh, I don't, I've never sought out one single McGuire in a Cardinals uniform card. I don't know what it, when I see it, it doesn't interest me. Uh, I don't feel like it's even the same person. Boggs, obviously, you know, switching teams. Yeah, I think, you know, when it's a young guy, Dwight, I think there's it's there's so many like little moving parts to it. Right. Um, Seth Beer, for example, I don't know. If you guys know which team he wound up on, I, I don't remember which team he wound up on, but you know, all of his current Bowman cards are Astros cards. I think he was involved in a trade. Uh, so he hasn't really made a name for himself as an Astros player yet, but that card I could see getting whatever Eloy Jimenez. Hey, cool. Cena, uh, cool. Cena. I responded to your comment. Um, I was going to do mail today. Well, I, I am going to do mail today. And cool seeing that your, um, your trade hasn't arrived. And I, I'm getting a little worried since the other day you said it was uh, nearby. So you might want to check the, uh, the tracking number or check the address. Because if you'd send it to my P.O. box, then it might still be there. What about Ken Griffey Jr.? Do you guys feel the same way about his cards, his Reds cards? Well, cool scene. I, I sure hope not. Um, I mean, check the check the tracking thing um, and see see if it says you know delivered or if it went to the wrong address. Maybe they sent it back. You had several cards in there, and I want to make sure you. You know, they get where they're supposed to go, so you get what you're supposed to get. Well, you know what, man? If it says it's in the same spot, then, uh, I mean, it's the post office, right? No offense to our fine postal workers, but there's a good chance it's still sitting there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and open these. Um, like I said, this was, it's not really intended to be a, a five hour stream because, again, we have the auction tonight. Um, and so I don't want to be on here uh, for, you know, 10 hours a day. Um, so I'm going to open these. Oliver.
Yeah, I mean, it, it works out great, you know, for a guy like Puckett. I, I kind of feel like those days have kind of come and gone, you know, where there's – I mean, even Michael Jordan switched teams eventually. Um, uh, Trout, I could see one, you know, staying with the Angels for the long run. Um, but for me, being an A's fan, losing big name players is just kind of par for the course, you know, because we don't pay anything. Uh, we don't have the budget. Obviously, we make it work to put together a quality team, but you just kind of get used to your favorite players leaving eventually. Um, I kind of feel like I know it's going to happen with Chapman. Exactly. Hey, and it's got a lifetime warranty. All right, Dwight. That's a quality wrench. Okay, so this first one is, and I'll, I'll wait. I've got one from uh, Terry Ducote and also from Barry Kay. They're not here. Um, uh, this one is from Devin Reed. And... You guys can see if you do ever send me stuff and you put on air donations and I know for a fact you want me to open it on the channel. Um, I also have another one, which I need to go find um, from Shane. OK, you already insulted me once over text. Now, now we're we're doing it again. Did you really? Cool scene. That's amazing. Oh, sweet. You got packs. This was unexpected. Again, this is from Devin Reed. And so, Devin, hopefully if you watch the replay. Hey, I got an archives pack. Cool scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too. Well, Devin is a man of few words. Uh, Gourmet TV, I hope you like what I've sent. Sincerely, Devin R. Well, Devin R., I do like what you sent because it's packs of cards, and that never gets old. So you could have, you know, not, not to go off the thesaurus on the rest of the viewers, you know, soothing voice, calming voice, mellow. What do you guys want me to open or do you care? Shaka's Closet. Good morning. Welcome to Cards and Coffee. First time ever. Well, since we were talking about archives, let's go ahead and go. Uh oh. Cool scene to having second thoughts. So, 2018 archives. I feel like archives seems to be like a very hit or miss. Uh, nice. A screaming voice, the archives. You got to judge one of one out of archives. Well, I, I, I'm sure I, I speak for everyone. Uh, we'd love to see it. Like that sounds like an amazing card. And you're a Yankees fan, which is even better. You got a nice Hall of Famer, Jim Tomey. You got an Aaron Judge one of one auto out of archives. Was it uh, a blaster? Well, you know what, Dwight? Like, I can, I can agree with what you're saying about not being a fan of it. I do like some of it. What I didn't like this year was the completely invisible. Um, low number parallels like there was no differences it just it was stamped signature series well i'm thoroughly confused at this point I, i'm i feel like signature series would imply that it's a signature who cares it's a one of one cool scene and that's an awesome card all right jim tell me Sandy Koufax, here's another, uh, we're just talking about old pitchers. Um, I've got an old Sandy Koufax card. Uh, maybe I'll go grab that in a second. Brooks Robinson. Whitey Ford. So this, I would say, even if you're not a fan of archives, I feel like when you pull a bunch of people that you are a fan of, 
uh, I like it. Uh, Dwight, is that because there's so many um, like different card styles and colors within the one box? Is that kind of what uh, turns you off to it? Whitey Ford, Jake Lamb. Okay, I could see that, especially if you're if you're. That's all right. Cool seeing it. Cool seeing it again. Uh, check on that shipment, and uh, obviously, I'll let you know when I know something. So, if you guys are watching, I want to say it was a box of 2017 tops update. I pulled a Jake Lamb, uh, a one out of five. Okay, so that what Jonathan H is saying the the bad autos i i'm on board with what you're saying 1000 percent i'm i'm sorry nobody wants some no name umpire auto or the the you know the president of the national janitors society or whatever like i want player autos i'm buying baseball cards like what the heck if you're gonna if you're gonna give complete crap autos like that. Like they're not even baseball player autos that belongs in Ginter. It's the same company. It's tops. Like, you know what you're doing, put it in Ginter or it needs to be like a, like a bonus, like a, you know, it'd be an awful case hit, but you get the idea. Like it needs to be something out of the norm, but I want my two autos or my auto of a baseball player. Yeah. Tommy Timmons, Sandlot card. Monty Irvin and Bob Gibson. So definitely some, you know, famous players from years past and obviously a Sandlot card, which some people find fun. Um, it's still fun to go through them. And hey, like these were just given to me, so I'm not going to complain about free packs. 2017 Series 1. If you guys were watching last night, I opened uh, 2018 uh, Series 2 and got an Independence Day card, which was kind of cool. I've never pulled one of those before. So Jonathan Villar. Ooh, I've always liked this card. Every time I see it, it looks like it should be an SP, but I think it's just the base card. But can't go wrong with a Mike Trout card early in the morning. Never own this card. Love it. Thanks, Devin. Made my day. Corey Spanberg. Nice Mookie Betts. Here's another great player that just does not get a lot of hobby love, no matter how much Tops tries to force him down your throat. It just, I don't know. It's just not there. Rick Porcello, I need to get more Red Sox fans in Patreon, so I have people to give my Red Sox cards to. Nolan Arnato. Well, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shy away from arguably the the best player of our generation. I mean, he's no Austin Hayes. Don't get me wrong, Jonathan H. But still. Yeah, Dylan, you're probably right. Pat Nishek, Howie Kendrick, Tyson Ross, and Chris Capuano from the Brewers. That trout card that I got from you, Jonathan H., is, I mean, I love that thing. All right, so we got 2018 Top Series 1. So we got Evan Longoria. Jonathan likes the Rangers. Nolan Ryan, Colby Allard. Terry's the big Astros fan. But Jonathan, are you pulling for... Uh... Yeah. It, it's as a friend of yours, obviously I want you to, to be successful in them. And then as the buyer, you know, you want the best deal possible. I mean, 
I, I probably shouldn't say it, but I think you and I both know, like I would have kept going up had somebody been really bidding against me. Jake Marisnik, a nice Trey Turner. Tom Edwards, big Nats fan. He's actually going to the game tonight, a lucky guy. Charlie Blackman, you going for the Braves? Nothing wrong with that. Oh, here's a nice, is that 83? Donnie Baseball. Cool looking card. Well, I, I don't mind saying that I'm glad it was me too, because that card is that card is nice. Had I not organized all my stuff uh, yesterday, I would I, it would have been sitting right next to me, and I could have shown people who didn't see it. I I feel like the Astros are going to be tough to beat this year. Giancarlo Stanton. Something about the Yankees, I don't know. I I feel like they're just. They're so expected to win that I like when somebody else can put together a team uh, and compete with them. Eventually. Uh, a Mike Trout card, Shockers Closet. Uh, I bought a, a Trout. Um, I want to say it was a, a 10 out of 10. Devin made it. Devin, yeah, we're opening your pack. I already got, I pulled this Mike Trout card, which I was just getting done saying I could never own this card. And you got us talking about Trout cards. So uh, it's been sitting here, uh, Devin, and I wanted to have at least a few packages to open before I opened it up. So I, I hope you weren't worried that I didn't get it, um, but it was here. Sorry. Robinson Cano and a Tapia. Yeah, he did. Del, that's when I saw the car. That's what it made me think. I was just watching, you know, some baseball this morning, catching up on all the stuff I missed yesterday during the stream. Um, yeah, he had a heck of a game. Uh, and I, I saw I Oliver uh, earmuffs. I saw the, uh, I didn't realize the Twins postseason losing streak was so epic. It's like 15 in a row. That's nuts. Or I'm so, yeah, 15 in a row, I think. That's crazy talk. Nice Roger Clemens card. We were talking about him earlier. Yeah, who do they have? They got Soroka. Sorry, Oliver. I did, I did say earmuffs, unless you just mean from the game yesterday. 15 in a row. Like that's, I, I really can't talk because the A's are nine in a row for uh, winner-take-all games. But, oh, 15. Who do the Braves have for pitching? I mean, they got rid of Colby Allard. Um. They got Soroka. Uh, is it Fonte, I think? Willie Randolph. I really like this design. I feel like this is kind of an underrated set. Didn't didn't really help 89 tops that the, the Griffey card is only in traded. Oh, well. See, Oliver, then it goes both ways, right? Ernie Witt, Jack Howell, yeah, they're, I mean, they're stacked on hitters, Dwight, but pitching not so much, yeah, Devin, uh, like I said, I've, I've had this here for um, over a week. I just didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to open it by itself. You know, like the video would, would have come and gone so quickly that I was kind of afraid you might miss it. Um, so I let a few others pile up. Louis Meadows. 
the big Marine, Matt Williams, although never actually served in the Marines. So I feel like that's kind of a weird nickname. Willie Upshaw. Uh, no, I have not received um, anything after the box of amazingness. Hey, James Palmer's here. After the box of amazingness, uh, Jonathan, I haven't gotten anything. I love these record breaker Wade Boggs. Tommy John, unfortunately, only famous for one thing. And Don Robinson. So, Devin, thank you very much. Um, I don't know anyone who is uh, disappointed about getting a bunch of packs as a surprise in the mail. Uh, that made my day. I, I appreciate it very much, sir. Thank you. And this one is from Terry Decody, who most of you saw pull a one of one last night. All right. Well, touche. Jonathan does make a good point. We got fancy stuff. Oh, you know what this is? This is this is actually an eBay auction. And I think he said he put some extra stuff in here. So this could be a good case for doing auctions with us where you actually get to make people aware of what you have um, rather than just throw it on, throw it on eBay and uh, cross your fingers. So for those of you that don't know, Terry or the way Terry does things. Terry is extremely, I'm just going to be honest, generous with his uh, pricing of things. So this is a, a Vladdy Jr. 5 out of 25 out of Chronicles. And this dual threat Vladdy Jr. double patch card out of 199 and he had both of these in a lot on ebay and i think i wound up paying like ten dollars like if i was a card flipper i would probably put both of these back on ebay individually and you could probably get 10 bucks a piece for these like it's it's crazy yeah Hey, Destro. Um, so any of you guys on here that do eBay um, selling, I'm, I'm becoming convinced that like trying to sell lots uh, really hurts your overall pricing. Um, I think there's something visually when you have multiple things sitting there and people are scrolling through the pictures. I think a lot of us kind of shop visually on eBay. Um, and I think when there's multiple things sitting there, I think it might kind of turn off a potential buyer because it's not it's not a clear one thing or you immediately think, well, I don't want to pay for two things when I only want the one. So they don't look and they don't realize that. I mean, I could almost guarantee I could put this one out of 25 card on there and make more money than I paid for the two of these things. So um yeah, Shaka's closet. I mean, when I when I try to buy autos to uh, populate Patreon packages, I always look for lots because you're going to wind up paying like three to four bucks for shipping, right? So even if you got a, a literally like a one dollar auto, it now becomes a five dollar auto, which is that's a game changer. Where if you could buy a bunch of you know four dollar autos and you pay the shipping on one time. I mean, you can see your money goes a lot farther in lots. Anyway, I got these from Terry Ducote. Uh, You might see these cards again. Um, I might auction these. I might sneak them into somebody's Patreon package. But they're they're gorgeous cards, uh, both numbered. Um, so I, I was definitely happy he reached out and told me. And these, you know, the dude's just a nice guy. Uh, so this, he just gave this to me. It's a Gary Sanchez um 
it's actually a game used memorabilia patch. So really can't go wrong with uh, Yankees, anything. And game used is also nice. Uh, both three Bregman. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely lots are the way to go. I mean, the first, the, the, the most awesome way to go is trading, right? Because most of you already have these cards. They're sitting around, you know, for instance, like this David Price patch card, um, which is also a game used patch, which I didn't used to be so particular about that kind of stuff. But player used just feels like there's some tops representative standing next to the guy, feeding him shirts to put on and off. And then, and then they put it on a card. Um, yeah. Anyway, so now I, I take note of the game use stuff, especially after Chronicles came out and people were complaining. Um, there is still game use stuff in Chronicles. I actually meant to say National Treasures, but you guys get the idea. So, yeah. Anyway, lots of cards. You know, if, if you're just sick of looking at the cards, I can understand. And you just want to get rid of them for quick money. But you got to realize you'll be taking pennies on the dollar overall. So, again, bought these. Terry, just being a nice guy, gave me these. So, thank you, Terry. Um, awesome cards. And I got this one. This is from uh, Barry K. You might know Barry K by his channel name, Cards for Days. And got, like I said, I've got one more package from Shane, but I think it might have gotten moved. All right. So, right off the bat, you know, awesome. Some cards for your PC or to trade away. Enjoy the 95 Fleer as much as I have. Barry K, cards for days. Um, for those of you that are going to be shipping cards, like some kind of cardboard on the outside keeps the corners from getting all dinged up. And uh, bonus points to Barry for masking tape. The packing tape people, oh, just drives me nuts. Not only is it super sticky and hard to open that I feel like I'm going to damage the cards trying to get them open, but it completely renders the top loaders useless. Yeah, numbered cards, uh, Clark Sports cards. Oh, let me address that real quick. Numbered cards, um, relic of some kind, a hit, an auto be, have become kind of the new norm. I think that it's become kind of rare that you find base cards that are really worth, hey, Blonde Beard's here, uh, that you find base cards that are really cards worth hunting. And I do feel like that's kind of the beauty of Top Series 2, where there's like four cards uh, in there which are worth having, you know. And you guys have seen the autos be hit and miss in Top's products, but you could buy Top Series 2 and not give a damn about the auto you're going to get and just hope you get a Vladdy no number or an Alonzo rookie card. Uh, Jonathan H., yeah, I think I, the, I don't know where you're getting those black bubble mailers. I haven't really looked for them, but I'll tell you that sent me, I think it was an Alonzo and a Cedric Mullins archives. Um, but the first time I saw those little black bubble mailers, I was like, damn, this looks nice. It definitely, it's crazy how much the the packing and the presentation of your card uh, kind of changes your perception of how nice the thing is. Um, I think I, I might have something nearby that I was going to show. Nope, I just got a stack of one touches. So I've got a few autos that have come in and the top loaders have been kind of garbagey looking. Um, and it just changes the whole perception of the card to me. So the black bubble mailer, definitely nice. Ooh, we got an auto right off the bat. Check that out. So Barry K does a lot of the tops Chrome. He's been kind of going through the years. 
Uh, Dell and Mel, why are they always rookies? Um, uh, honestly, probably price. You know, I feel like everything in this world comes down to money. So I feel like tops can probably pay a rookie, you know, pennies to uh, sign cards. Um, and a rookie will always have the cachet of being a rookie. So even if they stink, you know, rookie cards are always going to be desirable. So I think it's kind of a win-win for tops. And hey, if that guy turns out to be great, cool. Um, if he's, you know, turns out to be Cedric Mullins, then then there's that or Ryan O'Hearn, you know, um, it's, it's always a, a, a gamble. But yeah, you don't see too many veteran autos. I did notice that Gypsy Queen, though, does do veteran autos. So if you are an auto hunter, Gypsy Queen might be a way to go. Ooh. Hey, and it's a numbered auto. 149 out of 200. Andre Ethier. Can't say that I know him. Oh, it's Ethier. How nice that they tell you how to pronounce his name. So, Jonathan, you and I were just talking about this the other day. So this is an 89 Bowman card. Um, you can see just barely squeaks in to a normal size top loader, but you can see that it doesn't fit in a penny sleeve. So not too shabby. You think the Dodgers are going to take it? It's tied up right now, right? 1-1. One, one. Oh, for sure. Shaka's closet, uh, a numbered card of a favorite player. I'm just now noticing like how clean this Maguire is. You know, cards from the 80s, uh, not known for being well centered. This thing, this thing looks perfect. I don't know if you guys can really see that. Oh, he's on the Dodgers now. A fear. We got here Eric Chavez, former A's third baseman. I want to say he was like one of the last A's uh, third baseman to make an all star game. And this is kind of cool, too. That's got a game worn jersey patch over here. And it specifically says batting practice worn jersey on that side. So that's kind of cool. This is out of uh, SP. What year is this? I don't know. Unless it's staring me right in the face. I do not know what year this is. It's not in the little description. This is a cool card. I wonder if Upper Deck will ever come back into baseball. The 89 Bowman autograph out of 2019 Bowman. You got to post a picture of that. I, or I need to Google that. That sounds like a cool card. Oakland's power team, Canseco and McGuire. The classic card. I've said it before. I know it's not a fan of everyone, but I I, I kind of like the, the design of some of these 80s cards that a lot of people don't like. Oh, it's a buyback. That sounds cool. Oh, yeah. Upper Deck was definitely the premier card. So here's 95 Fleer. And this was definitely... Uh, a love it or hate it design with all of the all the information on the front side of the card. But it's McGuire's card, A's uniform, no complaints. There's another Big Mac. Bowman with a classy design, not too busy. A 93 Bowman. I thought it looked familiar because I I have the Jeter 93 Bowman. Well, you got me curious about this uh, McGuire Bowman 
redemption. So here we go. 88 score. First year score. Another, you know, guilty pleasure card. This is also at 88 score. The McGuire, Matt and Oaks combo rookie sluggers card. Again, I, I don't know how well this uh, design of card held up, but there's a lot of great players in there. That's why I have it for, uh, you know, packs with friends and stuff like that. Uh, I might be um, Shaka's Closet. Uh, I might be, or if there's something I have that you've seen that you'd want to trade. So still 88 score, 87 highlights, McGuire. Oh, here's a cool card. Bobby Crosby, Rich Harden, dual patch out of 99. Barry K coming through with the, the generosity here. Barry K is going to get a, a, a little return shipment, I think. I don't know if this card got a little bit boogered up. Nope, I think that's just in the card. And there it is. So Barry K saw me doing the Hump Day Hunts originally for this 85 McGuire. And I think this was out of, is it like 2001, maybe? Topps Chrome. Um, one of you might know. They do all those the reprints of cards. Oh, 2000. Super nice. 58. Hey, okay. Well, I'll say right now, uh, I'm very interested. So if you could email me, um, shock is closet, uh, gourmet TV at gmail.com. Um, yeah, email me because uh, I'm definitely interested. This is a cool card. Again, it's from Barry K. Knows I like the McGuire cards. And he is a big um, Javi Baez and Cubs fan overall. So I'm going to need to put something together to send back to him. So uh, McGuire kind of brings up the other topic I was going to ask you guys about. And then that'll be, well, you have, you've got about four more than I do, uh, Shaka's Closet. So the other topic I was going to bring up was... Um, Players from this generation or even earlier who have kind of fallen out of favor with returning back into the hobby. Um, who would you like to see? I've noticed that Canseco, who was, you know, essentially blackballed from baseball, has been making his way back into products. And I was kind of wondering your thoughts about people like him, um, Canseco in particular. Uh, coming back into the hobby, are you are you for it? Um, do you think they've kind of like you know time served, or after time people have kind of like thought of them differently? Is there somebody you'd like to see come back? Yeah, Bonds is another one who's been pretty much MIA, but I don't think you'll find too many people to argue that later year Bonds was a jerk. Um, so he's definitely not doing himself. Uh, he's not doing himself any favors as far as coming back into the hobby. Uh, not, not to say that Canseco was an, an angel. Um, all right, Dylan. Well, now that Dylan's clean, we can, <laughs> we can go back to talking. I'm just going to set this here. Cause it's cool looking. Um, yeah, Rose is an uh, interesting guy, right? He he went through a whole bunch of little phases of, you know, almost like taunting baseball, trying to apologize to baseball. Then it seemed like he was going to be forgiven, then not forgiven, uh, you know, Autographing things, you know, inscribing it blackballed. I don't, I don't know that that really showed remorse. Um, Canseco to me was a weird one because you know everybody hated him right away. 
you know, snitch, all, all those kinds of comments. Um, but I guess like when you think back about it, if, if he, if he cleaned up the game by exposing all of the roid issues, like that's kind of hard to fault you for that. Um, if he did it only for monetary gain, um, because his career was pretty much done, then it does sound um, kind of weaselly. I don't know. Um, I, I doubt that him exposing a lot of the steroid stuff was a terribly altruistic thing to have done. And I'm sure he did it to sell books, but um, the end result being what it was, right? Like, it's kind of hard to knock knock that that aspect for it now the dude in his personal life seems like an odd duck i mean obviously you know kind of made a, a spectacle out of his life you know mma kind of freak show uh fights like nothing that would be taken seriously um I don't know. He had a, there was a documentary. I think it was an ESPN documentary where it, it pretty much just seemed like a glorified pity party for himself. So I don't know what bonds is going to need to do. I think maybe as time passes, people will just kind of forget that he was, you know, a jerk and maybe his cards will start popping up again. Um, I think and Oliver would probably be able to speak more about this one. I think uh, Kirby Puckett's off field life, you know, kind of getting exposed later on uh, didn't really help him. I think it's still it's been a while. He hasn't really made a huge reentry into the hobby for as notable of a player as he I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He hasn't really been back. And then you got a lot of guys who are just kind of considered commons even though they made the Hall of Fame, you know, like nobody's really hunting down Harold Baines cards, you know. Um, but then you got other guys who, I, like, why isn't Dale Murphy way bigger in the hobby? Like, people love Dale Murphy. Yeah, there's another one. You know, like every once in a while, you'll find like a, a Tim Raines, some sort of a, you know, Hall of Fame slash historic autograph. But that's kind of it. Um, I, I could see Tim Raines, you know, think about all the cards with, you know, rock Raines on it. Uh, I, I think they could they could uh, make him. Make him more popular amongst the collectors. Uh, oh, it sucks. Shaka's closet. I'm buying stuff now, and we have a eight, eight point three eight. I think sales tax out here. Um, I, I'm definitely noticing it. And yeah, Oliver. I think uh, you know nobody wants to be the one that that like kicks the dead guy. Um, so I, I don't think that anybody really wants to pile on. I think you kind of saw that with uh, Skaggs and, um, you know, people that have passed away. Like, it's it's not a terribly favorable thing to, uh, to pick on a dead guy. Obviously, you know, prefer them to still be living. But I, I do think that as far as reputation goes, it probably helped the overall picture. And um, speaking of people's reputations within the hobby, um, Jonathan, I've, I've not heard anything else about the person that you and I um, spoke about. And I'm here is my thought process, Jonathan, because you are kind of familiar with the situation. I have resisted the urge to just come out and make a video and putting the person totally like on the spot for like what they've done. Um, I've anyway, 
Now, let me finish this train of thought. I, I've resisted doing it um, just because I, I feel like I question whether it serves a purpose. I, I, I fear that I'm doing it out of, you know, being vindictive or, you know, revenge. You know, on the other hand, you know, my wife and, you know, anyone else I talk to, they're like, well, maybe it stops the next person from getting um, screwed over by the person. And it's kind of hard to argue with that line of thinking because I doubt that this person is going to stop offering things for sale. Hey, father and son cards. Hey, we haven't seen you in a while. Um, so Jonathan, this is, you know, for you, but really this is for everyone. Um, I don't want my channel to be the, the negative, you know, channel where I, I post negative videos, um, I guess, seeking revenge on people. But I also feel like it, it's, it, it's doing a disservice to the rest of the, the, this, our little community, if I don't say anything and allow other people to buy from this person. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video and I'm going to just refer to the person as this person. And I'm not going to put his name in the title. And in the video, I will explain the situation, what happened. Um, and allow the person to see that like, hey, bro, like I'm going to put your name as the title of this video for everyone to see if you don't try to make amends. Um, and I guess that would kind of be my last chance because he does not return my emails anymore. And from everything that he said, uh, I'm sorry, but it's 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 just lying, you know, and the more of a fake explanation that's given, um, the more obvious that it's a lie. So, I mean, this person could have said, hey, you paid, you know, such and such amount of money. Um, I spent some of it. I can give you back half of it. So send me back half of the cards. OK, that could work. You know, um, really anything, anything to show, you know, some sort of accountability or remorse. But simply not responding to my emails is, is not really going to uh, fix this problem. And, you know, those cards were bought for my Patreon members and other people. So it's not really just screwing me over. Um, it's not screwing just me over. It's screwing over my patrons. You know that I mean, that money is real money. So that kind of dilutes the money that I have to spend on other things for Patreon members. So, I mean, it it it's stung and it's going to have a real consequence. So. I'm going to give this person, you know, a, a very public chance to fix it. And if I don't hear from this person, then I'm going to change their the title of the video to the person's name. Uh, you know, again, uh, so I'm going to start at the top up here. So what Jonathan's saying, you know, four spots at 70 bucks and a box costs 100, you know, like. I don't think that anybody, anybody can expect that you are doing everything for 100% for free, right? Like you had to go buy it. There's a, there's a monetary risk involved when you buy a product and then you hope to sell it afterwards. You know, there's, there's the, I guess, entertainment, the, the quote unquote business aspect of running like your channel, you know, even if you just value it as you value your time, I don't fault anyone for making some, some profit off of doing a break, right? Like even, you know, it's just, it's reality, right? Like you can't really just go buy six packs out of a sealed box of let's say 1995 tops, right? It doesn't exist that way. So, I don't mind that a person does that. 
uh, making, you know, a uh, uh, 180% profit off of something seems, seems a bit much. Uh, that being said, you know, if somebody's going to pay that much, then that's another story. If it's a truly desirable thing, then, then I get it. You know, like I don't, I don't have one sitting next to me, but let's just say for, if you guys can still see or hear, uh, say something, but right now I'm getting a, a warning. Okay, I'm back. We lost some people, I think. Okay, let me let me finish this train of thought real quick. So selling something for an upmarking when it is a rare and desirable thing. Okay. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Terry's card as a for instance, right? And, and here's the way that I see it. And Terry paid five dollars for his pack of Chronicles, which to me, that's a good deal for a pack because you really can't just go pick up individual packs of Chronicles. Uh, a blaster of Chronicles is $20. There's four packs. He paid $5. See how that works out? Now, Terry pulled a one of one. If there's five cards in the pack, Terry paid one dollar per card should terry have to sell the card for one dollar no because terry has a rare and desirable thing that warrants the upcharge i mean this is this is the whole point of the hobby right every card is not worth equal amount you don't know it ahead of time and you don't sell it for what the pack sells for what jonathan is saying is true right if you can go today and buy that same thing for dramatically less than what it's being sold for, so much so that it doesn't warrant the extra cost for convenience, getting it, availability, all that good stuff, then it, it's I don't it's kind of crazy that people will pay that much. I think this was the problem with the jabs. Um, auction that we all know about where people are overpaying for these things. I don't know. Marketing as I'm not making any money when you're charging, you know, an extra $180 for the box. is just a flat out lie. Unless that person themselves is also a horrible shopper. I don't know. I think that it's all in how you present yourself. You know, I, I think that most of the things that I sell, um, you you can go and you can look and see what i'm making or not making and i think that's obvious um and yeah i think that that was a, a, a an utter failure on a, an accounting um organizational sense but you know lesson learned anywho so that's how i feel about channels doing that you know um mega boxes you know like i'll just let's just put it out in the open right like mega boxes that i i charge the the 34 dollars right because go go buy a mega box right like go down like jonathan's not an idiot like he knows what mega boxes cost originally and you know can you just go get them they're like 40 bucks at card shops you know they're they're 40 bucks uh online uh if you can go grab one today, I, I would tell you not only should you not buy from me, but you should go grab one and you should tell me how many they have. And I'll just blank check you buy every single one there because you can't find them. Right. And I feel like to me, that makes it rare. That makes it like the one of one Terry card it, that warrants the price. You go on eBay and you can buy one cheaper. By all means, do that. Like, I'm not going to fault you for it, but. I'm charging what is a widely established. That's the going price. In fact, I think it's less. So there's that. Brendan Simmons, we missed you last night. Um, anyway, so that's how I feel about charging things. Uh, what did I miss here? Uh, Jonathan, I do appreciate your support. You've always been very supportive of the channel. Um, and I have a, a Jonathan H. Um, special that's going to be in everybody's Patreon packages 
Um, so I, I look for, I'm not going to, I'm not going to explain it. Uh, it's just going to be a surprise. Um, and Clark sports cards. Yeah. I, I think looking at, at base cards um, is, is a good thing, you know, like uh, guilty right here, guilty of overpaying for a box of 2012 archives. I did get it for super cheap compared to going raids, but when you like, um, 2018 update is a good example, right? 2018 update has a bunch of very valuable base cards. These are cards. You have a very good chance of getting these cards. you got a very good chance of getting Akuna something, Otani something, Soto something, Glaber Torres something, uh, Soroka something, like all these names, right? It, it's a who's who. Th those are base cards. But overpaying for a box because there is one low number SSP or auto. And that's like, I'm going to pay five times the going rate because I might get the one, you know, Akuna bat down SSP. That's, that's a fool's errand. Like you're throwing money away. Um, anyway. Yeah. And Blombeard. Yeah. The, the, uh, the mega box things, man, if you, if you were, if you were around when the mega boxes went on sale uh, and you don't think that it took an enormous amount of work to get them and find them like you're you're fooling yourself. I mean, there was like a good three or four week period where I was wearing out the right like this is an investment An investment is is a risk. You know, your stock go up, it could go down. These cards could sell. These players could tank. So, like, I took a real financial risk buying all of these things. And, and yeah, I, I do feel like um, I do feel like it's worth, you know, getting a profit for. Um, yeah, Blombeard, it was it was crazy, right? Like I was going on my lunch and I've got uh, two targets. They're about 25 minutes away. And so like I would leave, I'd go to one, I'd go to the other. And this was like every single day I was doing this. I mean, it was completely consuming. Oh, did I miss the part? They don't tell me to stop preaching. It's my channel. I'll preach on. Uh, so Jonathan, Jonathan, I still have the ones here from last night there were two but now that you've had some time to think about it um uh, yeah i'm not going to turn down seeing a uh, reggie jackson auto which by the way i just bought a reggie jackson auto um i haven't decided yet if it's going to be for myself or if it's going to go in the the patreon um winning circle good grief enough already all right come on uh, anyway, I got the two sitting here, Jonathan, but now that you've had a chance to sleep on it, would you like me to grab some more so that you can pick? Thanks, Blondebeard. Not only is he an A's fan, but a stand-up guy. All right. Well, as promised, they are right here. Do we have any order? I don't know if we got it. Dell and Mel, I wish that there were guaranteed autos in these. There are not. Um, I'm sure one of you can think back. Um, yeah, Blondebeard, you, you might be able to think back. I think we've opened probably about six of these. Does that sound about right? Probably about six of these. And we pulled two Tatis Jr. numbered cards we pulled i want to say it was a brewer hicklin um a brewer hicklin numbered card last night um we we are due for either an auto 
or um, some Alonzo, some uh, Wander uh, base mojos we haven't seen yet. So we've got four of these packs, and th this is this is a great example of a base pack that actually has some potential. Uh, there's Jordan is in here, Alonzo, Wander Franco, um, all sorts of good stuff just in the base pack. Right off the bat, Shohei Otani, definitely nice. And Jonathan, I, I can already guess that uh, Jonathan is, is sitting right there with his list of who's going to get a lot of these. Although I do hope that if Jonathan gets a big hit, that uh, it goes in his PC. Jonathan, I, I have a, a gift for you, actually. Jose Ramirez. One of them is a gift for you, Jonathan, and then I'll let you decide what to do with the others. Jose Ramirez, JT Real Muto. Old Matty Chapman, the best card you could get in this whole thing. There's actually a sky blue numbered parallel of that. Um, Clark Sports Cards, uh, I don't know exactly because we've been selling a bunch of them, but I will tell you I have enough. Uh, Mitch Hanniger. Christian Santana, a Zach Collins, Chrome, Dylan Cease, Chrome. Uh, for those of you, as I'm going through this, Dylan Cease base, um, I did adjust the uh, focus on this today, uh, sharpness and color saturation. So you guys tell me what you think. And Roberto Ramos. Okay, so we'll stop asking him questions, but I'm still gonna I'm gonna explain the Jonathan Jonathan's gift. So Jonathan, just listen. All right, second pack. Got Lindor, Mookie Betts, Ozzy Albies. That's a, a favorite of Jonathan. All right, so Destro, I, I know you weren't here last night, Destro, but hopefully it's, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> now I'm picturing that. Come on, Dwight. Ozzy Albies, Jonathan H. likes Albies. Uh, Ramon Laureano, Ryan Barucki, Daz Cameron Chrome, Franklin Perez, Colton Welker. Usnail Diaz and Alex Fido. Yeah, I, I messed with the uh, all the all the gizmos, all the settings. Um, at least on my screen, it looks better than last night. Uh, everything to me looks better, so hopefully it it does look better. Um, Chance Adams. Nice Justice Sheffield card, rookie card. Cedric Mullins can never have too many of those. Jonathan Loasiga. Eniel De Los Santos. Oh, Jonathan H. with the Wander Franco Chrome. Graded, I've seen these going for about 20 bucks a piece. L.E. Johnson, welcome. Wander Franco, Chrome, first Bowman. That's a nice, looks perfect too. A little surface scratching that's very typical with them. Get that sucker graded. That's a $20 card right there. Jeter Downs, another Alex Fredo. Hey, we got a Vladdy Jr. I've got, I got a good feeling about this mega box. So that card would fetch you a couple bucks. So we still got one pack to go. Oh, please. That's not, yeah, that's not a shabby pack. This is definitely, again, this is one of those 
one of those products where you know the base packs the base cards are nothing to sneeze at got a granky eugenio suarez brian anderson now we just need an alonzo and a tatis and an eloy chris davis is that the magic that's the magic trick now brandon crawford cole tucker hey speak of the devil peter alonzo chrome vladdy wander alonzo jonathan just bought his box back right there a sean murphy chrome that dude is a stud for the a's i don't know what team he'll wind up on eventually but uh He's definitely he's definitely going places. Libertore and Aramis Adamin. Good call on Jonathan not uh not getting extra boxes to pick from. I mean that's I, I'd say there's there's no doubt about it. These are these are the top three in the product, with Tatis and Eloy being a close uh runner up. Well, obviously plus the Chapman. All right, here we go. So, the first of his Mega Box packs. Okay, so we got Reggie Lawson, Mojo, Freudus Nova, Mojo, Jonathan Lawasaga, Rookie of the Year favorites, Dylan Cease, Mojo. And Adrian Morjon Mojo. All right. Next pack. We're hoping for the big hit in this one. This box was loaded with star players. Right off the bat, we got a Joey Bart Mojo. This box is doing it the slow way, but he's definitely... He's definitely pulling some big names. Ian Anderson. Tristan McKenzie. This usually would be where the auto or the numbered hit was. Dane Dunning. And Nolan Gorman. So we didn't get the big numbered card, but we did get Joey Bart Mojo. Pete Alonzo, Chrome, Wander Franco, Chrome, Vladdy Jr., Base, and a bunch of other uh, decent prospects and names. So, you know, I, I, I think I'd be disingenuous if I didn't say I was really hoping for an autograph. However, if you're going to not get an autograph, this is definitely, I mean, that right there, that's, that's, that is the card you want right there. Yeah, I definitely got the money back on that one. See me's going for around five bucks. Again, that's a big dollar card. That's a couple bucks. And that's probably a, a five to six dollar card right there. Uh, Clark Sports Cards, I, I will leave that to you. Um, we are doing the auction later. Um, if Jonathan wants, I will throw, uh, that Bart, uh, in the auction pile for him, but, uh, Jonathan's going to need to, uh, comment when he's got some clothes on. All right. Second box. Jonathan's probably just now on his second round of, uh, Shampoo, rinsing, and repeating. Okay, well, I was just talking about him being in the shower and your comment about being interested. I just want to make sure we're still talking about cards, Dwight. Okay, this is a family channel. All right. First pack, 
and I had a uh, I had another um, mail package that I didn't bring in the room with me, but my wife handed it to me. All right, De Los Santos. Zach Granke, I will say, as you watch more people on the channel buy um, Mega Boxes, you will you will notice that there's a very discernible um, collation pattern. Granke, Suarez, Brian Anderson, Chris Davis, Victor Victor Mesa. There's a nice Bowman Chrome card. Put that in a sleeve. Well, Jonathan is definitely pulling all of the good prospect Chrome cards. Jonathan's probably air drying. He's probably got a full body air blower. DJ Peters, Drew Waters, Franklin Colomb, and Chris Paddock. Victor Victor Mesa card is nice. I think the Victor Victor Mesa is more valuable than the Victor Mesa Jr., which obviously, for an obvious reason, those two get confused all the time. We've got Ryan Barucki, Chance Adams, Justice Sheffield, Cedric Mullins. You can start to see what I mean about collation. Jonathan Lawasaga. Cabrian Hayes, Chrome. Freudis Nova. Travis Swaggerty, Chrome. Anthony Siegler. And Dustin May, who got called up this year. A lot of these prospects got called up this year. So their cards should probably start taking off soon. Two base packs to go. Yeah, uh, Dwight. Yeah, the the, the collation is it, it's extremely noticeable, especially since the I want to say that the the base cards of veterans and rookies is only a hundred card set, and the base prospect set is one hundred and fifty cards. So there's not a ton of cards. So you do notice the pattern very quickly. I didn't notice, though, if there was a discernible pattern for where the Francos, um, Alonzos, and Vladis fell. It seemed like those were more random. Hanniger, Lindor, followed by Albies. Nope, I'm sorry. Mookie Betts, followed by Albies. There you go. See, so he's got two Albies now, Loriano. Hey, he got the Jordan Alvarez base. Uh, okay, uh, Dylan Mel, that's a great question. Oh, and we got an Austin Riley chrome right behind it. So this is turning into be a good pack for uh, base cards. And Libertore. So when it comes to Bowman... Dellen, um, when it comes to Bowman, the first Bowman card kind of serves as their rookie card. Um, when it comes to regular Tops flagship, then they only have a rookie card. So um, definitely first Bowman, Dellen, because that is their that is their rookie card in a sense for Bowman. So we have the Libertori, we have D.L. Hall, and Sean Murphy. Hey, like father, like son. Yeah, hey, it doesn't hurt, right? It's like, you know, walking right into the good part. Okay, this is his last base pack. Yeah, I kind of like um, a lot of these current cards, um, Dwight, where they, they they seem to focus more on just like the stars of the team. So you're not just littered with commons. Jake Cave, nice Shohei Otani, Jose Ramirez, 
JT Real Muto, best player that was ever born. Nolan Gorman, Chrome. Jonathan India. Joe Adele, Chrome. That's a nice card. And Joe Adele, Base. Back to back. Those are nice cards. His um his Heritage Minor League cards. And Cabrian Hayes, his Heritage Minor League cards are some of the more uh, valuable cards in that set. I think Joe Adele cards are are poised for a rise. If Vader was here, he's a big Angels fan. He could tell us more about old Joe Adele. All right. Now we're ready for the big boys. Come on, autograph. I'm going to I'm going to try to hold this pack flat so I don't see if there's a thick card in here before you guys do. That way we can all be surprised together. And I cannot damage the cards. It's hard to open these cards upside down. Okay, we got Tristan McKenzie. Usnel Diaz. Oh, it's green. So Jonathan's getting a hit. Reggie Lawson, 94 out of 99. Green Mojo. Nice pull. Sean Murphy Mojo right afterwards. So Jonathan got a, a low number parallel. Reggie Lawson with the Padre. It was a thick card. I'm glad I didn't see it. Nice pull here. You had a lot of nice base cards in those packs, too. Sean Murphy and Dustin May Mojo. Yeah, out of 99, I mean that's the that's the lowest that's the lowest number we've seen pulled so far and I mean we definitely got some nice some nice boxes. I think that you know looking at the odds, I think we're definitely beating the odds um, on the channel. You know, I, I watched I think Abs had like 150 boxes to open and you got to see kind of in real time how hard it is to pull uh numbers and autos you know when you when you watch two boxes at a time and it's like one out of two you kind of think that you kind of think that every one out of two you're going to get something and that's really not reality like this is just we're getting lucky um but it's it's working okay um if we can do like a little recap uh jonathan and then i'll make sure everything goes to where it needs to go Okay, you got Brady Singer, Logan Webb first, Kevin Newman, Rookie of the Year favorites, Royce Lewis, Twins Mojo, and Hunter Green. Royce Lewis cards is a nice card right there. But obviously, the, the star of this party, right there, Reggie Lawson, 94 out of 99. So I'll tell you what, um, Jonathan, I have something for you, and you guys are going to be patient for 30 seconds. You can time me if you need to.
All right, let me catch up real quick. Pizza is delicious. Okay, guys. Uh, so those of you that watch the channel know that uh, Jonathan sent me a, 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 a quite frankly, uh, an overwhelming gift, uh, uh, overwhelming um, display of generosity. And so what it's kind of inspired me to do is in everybody's Patreon package, you're going to get your cards that you paid for, right? You paid for 10 cards. So those are from me. Okay. Um, those are from me. So I don't want to go down that road of what I've seen in other channels where the, the Patreon creator is accused of, you know, selling stuff he was given. So you're going to get the 10 cards from me. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to put in a couple of cards from either the cards that Jonathan gave me or cards of my own. And one of them is for you to keep. And one of them is for you to pay it forward and to give to the next person. Okay. And I'll put a little note with them. And again, this is something that uh, Jonathan's generosity has inspired me to do. Um, and I, I really can't thank him enough for that. And I mean, you guys are seeing it right here, like textbook different definition of uh, generosity. So, so that's going to happen. And so Jonathan, um, I, I found this. Okay. And, um, this is for you and the rest of them, you can decide what to do with. Okay. So this is um, from the Nationals, um, the 87 throwback uh, Nolan Ryan card. I know Jonathan collects uh, Nolan Ryan. Um, so I found this, this pack especially because it had Ryan on the front. So that one's yours. And that one's definitely going to you and you're not going to talk me out of it. And there are, it's a five card set that you could only get at the national. So what you choose to do with the rest of them, that is up to you. Okay, so let me, let me put Nolan in a sleeve first. These cards feel nice. They're like, they're not really glossy, but they, they, they're not that rough cardboard feeling. So congratulations, you're the recipient of a limited edition 87 Tops anniversary card produced exclusively for the 2017 National Sports Collectors Convention, 30th anniversary of this Tops design. So Jonathan, that's for you. Um, obviously, this is not meant to repay all that you have done, but just a small token of thanks, and that's for you. I, I, I think that's a great idea. Okay, so the next one we have is we have Johnny Bench. Ooh, Ken Griffey Jr. on an 87 card. That's a nice looking card. Cal Ripken Jr., another nice card. And Ted Williams. Looking looking awesome on an 87. All right, so Jonathan. Uh, you can tell me what to do with these four or, you know, if, if you have more contact with the person that you would send these to, I will send these to you and um, and you can do with them as you please. I don't know if any of these really fit the bill of uh, somebody getting a package from me. But anyway. You get four to uh, do with as you please. And let me kind of move this stuff aside. So um, I'm just going to say this again. 
because I know that you guys are commenting and it would seem that like a, a normal functioning human could see your comments and then just make that happen right away. But it, I don't have all your cards next to me. They're all like boxed up. That's how I keep them organized. So if, um, okay, all right, awesome. So they'll come to you and then you can do them as you please. So Jonathan, if you're going to kind of divvy these up amongst people, uh, I think you said you could either text me or, uh, or email me or something, and then I'll do that later. I always want to sleeve all the Bowman Chrome cards because they are prone to getting scratched. And I want to open this right now. This is from, this is from Shane B. Uh, Shane B sent me this again. He, he might have, you know, thought it was lost or something because it was sitting here for a little while uh, as I waited for more things to roll in. Uh-oh, are we frozen? Yeah, 87 is awesome. Speaking of 87, um, those of you that know Vader, uh, Vader bought the rest of the box of 87 tops for me to open. And that was one of those things... Like we talked about, we talked about um, costs of things, you know, and I added up all the prices of the packs and I was like, man, I can't charge you that much uh, per pack. So I reduced the, the price for him. Just, I felt better about it. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I felt the need to mention that, but I wanted to give him a better deal than. So it looks like we've got very well protected stack here. Ooh. Oh, he had told me about this one. So this is this is the Matt Olson. I think this is 2000 either 17 or 18 Gypsy Queen and it's the color variation card. That's a nice looking card. Matt Olson is an underrated player for sure. I hope he sticks around. I think he finished the year with something like 36 home runs. Uh, dude's a beast. Yeah, and your color is not messed up at home. Like, it's this is a color variation card. It doesn't look quite black and white. Um, super nice looking. Yeah, the color is awesome. I love Gypsy Queen. Uh, Gypsy Queen is one of those kind of retro style cards that this is what, you know, really inspires me when I pick what I'm ordering uh, for you guys. Uh, this is why I got um, a bunch of 2018 Gypsy Queen. Um, they're just nice looking. And I got a Nick Martini rookie there. And I got a Nick Martini rookie there. I'll need to look look into that. I don't know what exactly the color variation is, but I know that it is one. So we got a 2019 Tops Nick Martini rookie card out of Series 2. The Ramon Laureano rookie card out of Bowman. We saw a few of those in Jonathan's boxes. Ooh, the, the Sepia Sean Manea out of Chrome. Had I gotten this card like a week ago when he sent it to me, I, I wouldn't have like personally hated him for losing us the wild card game. But that, he's got he's got a lot of potential. I shouldn't pick on him too much. Oh, and we've got the Mark McGuire 2017 image variation card. Yeah, this was at an update and I opened some update looking for the Matt Chapman, but I never got this card. Dang, talk about hitting the nail on the head with uh, the right card for the right channel. Yeah, Sean Manea, come on, kid. Well, thank you very much to Shane B. Uh, man, a good day. A good day all around, and it's just getting started. I, I I still need to show you guys the the Sean Manea um, the autograph card. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to leave again to go hunt it down. Maybe I'll try to have it ready for tonight. You guys just have to see how he signs his name. It, it's it's very fitting, especially after the way he performed 
in his last two starts. But I do like these cards. Nice. I, I've not been lucky enough to pull a, uh, a get a hot box of Heritage, but I do like that Tops has hot boxes in something because um, Panini is really just kicking the crap out of them when it comes to things like that. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and and shut this down for now. Remember that tonight we're doing the auction. The auction starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. And there is a list of cards posted on Patreon. Um, the bidding is for Patreon members only. And that's pretty much always the way that it's going to be. Um, there is a small twist that I will announce later. And I'll, I'll just kind of sneak preview it for you right now. Um, obviously we've, we've got about 15 Patreon members. Okay. We've got 15 Patreon members and the cards being sold are not mine. Okay. And, and Patreon members can send me cards and I'll do kind of a focus on them. Uh, it just simplifies the shipping of them since I'm already shipping you guys stuff. And I don't want to, all right, Jonathan H, uh, Nice pull on that 99 uh, Reggie Lawson and all those others, especially that Wander uh, Bowman. Um, geez, not Bowman. The uh, Chrome. Okay, so anyway, back to back to the thing. Um, so what I don't want to do is I don't want to limit the potential buys um, to just the 15 people if zero of the pay. Patreon members will want a card. It's Royce Lewis, but Oliver, being a Twins fan, has a bunch of Twins cards for sale. Well, if none of the other 15 Patreon members make an offer at whatever Oliver starts his bidding at, then I would let another viewer buy it. However, if a Patreon member if a Patreon member makes an offer at even the starting bid price, then no one else can bid. Uh, no one else who's not a Patreon member. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you understand that the only reason why I'm doing it is because I don't want, um, for one, I don't want your cards to go unsold if there's a buyer right there. And I want you to be able to get a fair price for your cards. All right. So, it, it might be a complete disaster, but I think it's worth trying at least once. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do uh, the Patreon stuff. I'm sorry, the auction stuff. But Patreon always, it, it's Patreon first. All right. So everyone, with that, I will see you around later tonight. Uh, get your PayPal ready. Uh, Terry's got some amazing stuff for sale. Uh, he actually, he, he told me earlier today, he pulled a Tatis Jr. He pulled a Tatis Jr. Um, out of top series two that he's going to add to his already stack of three with a Vladdy series two, no name, uh, no number, and Alonzo series two, a Vladdy Bowman Chrome, and now a Tatis Jr. out of series two. And the starting bid is $15, not five zero, fifteen dollars $15. So somebody's going to swoop that up for a good price. Uh, Dylan, yeah, I understand. Um, like I said, I'd be, I'd be willing to, to work something out with you, but I'm not going to, I don't want to feel like I'm twisting your arm to, uh, to be a, a Patreon member, you know, everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with and what they can afford. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but I'll work with you guys. All right, gentlemen, enough. I will see you tonight, 7 p.m. And if, if Sal shows up, we might also do an impromptu break of 87 and some 90 tops. All right, gentlemen, thank you. And I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, see you tonight.